In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate how the sock heel turn for a heel flap and gusset construction works, allowing you to modify the heel when working with different stitch counts or different gauges, or in order to modify a heel for a better fit. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. This is a, a basic sock that was knit cuff down and it used a heel flap and gusset construction for the heel. So as, as is typical for a sock, the heel was worked with half of the stitches for several inches and then the heel was turned in order to form this 90 degree turn. Here's a swatch that just shows a heel flap and the heel turn. So you can see that the, the heel turn is, is shaped, kind, is kind of U-shaped. There's this kind of straight base across here and then the heel angles off in this direction. And so it's this starting point, this base that we're going to talk about today. One of the things that many knitters find mysterious about the heel turn is how to do the first couple of setup rows. If they're using a pattern, the pattern will tell them exactly how many stitches to work for the first row of the heel turn and then uh, what to do on the second turn and from then on it gets to be pretty straightforward. But that first row can be a little bit mysterious. So let's look at how it works. This is a very, very short heel flap that I've set up here. And I've set it up over 32 stitches, which is really, really common for socks. Often you'll have a different stitch count, but it's really common to have 32. So what I've done here is I've placed a marker at the center of the heel stitches. So I have an even number of stitches. So the center of the, the heel is between two stitches. So I have 16 stitches here and then the marker, and then I have the other 16 stitches. So if I had 32 stitches for the heel flap, the instructions are often going to be to slip the first stitch, then to knit 17 stitches, and then I would be working a decrease and another stitch. So let's see what where I am when that happens. Slip one and now I'm going to knit 17. Now the stitch count varies depending on how many stitches that I start out with the heel flap and that is what is confusing to some knitters is how do they know how many stitches that they're supposed to work before they do their first decrease um, to establish the heel turn. So at this point, I have slipped one stitch and I have knit 15. So I've got 16 stitches all together because remember I'm at um, the, the center here had 16 on each, each side. So I've slipped one and I've knit 15. So here's my knit 16 and here's my knit 17. So where am I? I am two stitches past the center of the heel. And now I need to do my first decrease. And this decrease is typically an SSK or an SKP decrease, a left leaning decrease. So I do the decrease and after I do my decrease, I always work one more stitch. So I work one more stitch and now I'm supposed to turn. I still have all these stitches left on the needle, but now I have to turn the work. So row two of this particular heel turn is going to be worked as followed. You're going to slip the first stitch, then you're going to purl five. One, two, three, four, five. This puts you, again, two stitches past the center. And then you do a purl two together and you work a final stitch, you purl one more. And then once again, you have stitches left on the needle and then you make your turn. From this point on, the place where you had your turning point leaves a gap in the stitches. So from now on, all of the rows will be worked by slipping the first stitch, 
working across until you get to that gap. In this case, I'll be knitting six stitches. So I'm knitting one stitch more than I purled on the previous row. And now I've come to this gap. And so I work these two stitches on either side of the gap together. So I'm going to do my SSK across here. And then I always end by working one more stitch. And then you can see I have a gap on this side. So when I turn here again, I start by slipping a stitch. And then I purl until I get to the gap. And in this case, now I've got, I'm going to be purling seven. So every time I'm working one stitch more than I worked the row before, I don't typically need to count them because I'm working until I get to this gap between the two stitches. And then I, I decrease those two stitches together and I work one more stitch. So I continue doing this back and forth, back and forth. Um, always working and decreasing across the gap and then working one stitch more after that. What you'll notice sometimes, depending on the number of stitches you start with and depending on the number of stitches past the center that you, that you work when you initially begin, you may be doing your final decrease in the last two stitches. There might not be one more stitch to work after your final decrease. And that's okay. You just decrease them together. You turn and you slip the stitch. So that's how you work this type of a heel turn. So you have four stitches across that form this base. Those four stitches are never decreased. You establish the first decreases just past those four center stitches on each side and then you continue from there. You don't have to do two stitches past the center. You could do three stitches past the center and that creates a little bit of a wider base here. So if you're working at a finer gauge, you have more stitches per inch or if you're knitting for somebody who has a, a pretty wide heel, you might want to make your heel wider. And so in order to establish this type of a turn, you'd work three stitches past the center and then you do your decrease, work a stitch you'd turn, and again, you'd work three stitches past the center before you worked your decrease. So in this case, instead of doing a purl five on the second row, you would do a purl seven because you have two additional stitches that you'd be working past. Here is a situation where I have a very pointy heel. So I didn't work past the center at all. I worked right up to the center, and then I did my first decrease right after the center. And then I, I, turn, I worked my decrease, I worked another stitch, turn, slip one. I knitted the stitch that was created by the decrease, which brought me to the center. And then I decreased on the other side. So in this case, I had no stitches past the center. I could have done one stitch, two stitches, three stitches, however many past the center, as long as I do that in each direction when I'm establishing the, those first two rows. So here's an example where I have an odd number of stitches on the needle. So rather than marking the, the halfway point of a heel between two stitches, the halfway point is actually is a center stitch. So in this case, I've marked that center stitch. I can still work two stitches past the center, but instead of giving me four stitches that create the base, it's going to give me five. Or I could work a one stitch past the center stitch and then I'd have a, a base of three, however many I wanna work in each direction. But it's going to be an odd number that creates the base rather than an even number. But once again, I start by slipping a stitch and then working two stitches past the center. So this is the center stitch. So I have to work the center stitch and now I can work two stitches past it. So I knit two more and then I can do my decrease, SSK, and my single knit stitch and then I turn. Now 
for this first row, because I have five stitches that are creating the base instead of four, I'm going to be purling six. So I'm slipping one, I'm going to purl six stitches. So I've knit three. I'm about to knit the, the center stitch, that's four, five, six. So I'm two stitches past this center stitch. And now I can do my purl two together. Purl one, I always work one stitch after I'd work my decrease, and then I turn. And then you would continue working this just like you would work if you had an even number of stitches. You're always going to be decreasing across the gap formed by the previous turn and working a stitch um, more after you work the decrease in both directions. When knitting a sock at a typical gauge of eight stitches per inch, the base of the heel turn will be half an inch wide if you work two stitches past the center on each side to establish your first decreases. This is a perfectly fine base for an average adult sock, but it may not work well for an infant or a very large adult, or if you're working with a very different gauge. In that case, you may decide to work more stitches or fewer stitches past the center in order to establish the first decreases for your heel turn. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.